Okay, sometime last year, as a um, monthly report, I did a voiceover on a time lapse of a of a, um, of a drawing, and it was this little owl, and this is actually attempt number two. Now, I did this using um, sharpies or non-branded sharpies, so that sort of permanent marker, and just some regular um, writing ink, but. My first attempt is this one here. I don't know how well you can see, but it's gone completely peaked on. It's really soaked in and blurred all over the place. And that's because I didn't prime this one before I started. And it didn't really start to cause anything, cause a, um, an issue with the image until a little while later. It took a while for it to really start to bleed. And yeah, it kind of ruined the picture I was going for. So. This one's sat on the shelf waiting for some sort of second life. So this is what I'm working on, second life for this. I'm going to try and use the same um, Little Owl image, but use a slightly more artistic, well not exactly artistic, but uh, more interesting technique at least. Do it. <coughs> so, part two of the thought process I've got with this is I wander around shops quite a lot. I, at, at present I don't have well, any really uh, ready cash that I can buy what I want to. I, I'm kind of limited to what I've got in stock. But I wandered around one of my favourite craft shops, which is it's not a craft shop, but it's kind of a bit of everything kind of craft and books and that kind of thing kind of shop. And they had one of these, a clock movement, for the grand price of two pound and in most crafty shops these will run you six seven pound a go so at two pound I couldn't help myself I had to pick one up so now I've got to find a way of using it so my plan is to redo my owl image and use this to turn it into a clock for my bedroom so at least that's the idea so what I'm working with is some way of covering this completely. Now on previous projects I've done where I've tried to paint over um, this kind of permanent marker, it hasn't taken it too, taken it too well. It's, it's needed three or four layers to really get the paint gone. So this time around I'm going to use paper mache and I'm going to use book pages. Now this is Aristotle's Politics. Really dense reading. <laughs> But it does the job for this kind of thing. So I'm using a book like this because I don't need it. Um, all the interesting quotes I could ever get out of it I've got, I've used, I've kept a note of the ones I like and I've got an online sample of it so if I really want to um, look it up then by all means. So this book could end up going to a charity shop and I know from working in the um, book section of a charity shop that unless it's worth more than a pound fifty on uh, Amazon or one of those sort of marketplaces, they don't sell them on. They just pulp them. So I'm getting some life out of this book and quite a bit of life because I've managed to use this for a number of projects. So I always rip paper for paper mache because the, the rougher edge seems to kind of settle neater together. It, it kind of, I don't know, it filters down in a better way. That's probably not the right word, but it's the word I've got. So, yes, use a ruler to make sure your tears are pretty much straight, but I never cut these with scissors anymore because you end up having a really clean edge and you don't want a clean edge necessarily. And I don't want one on this because this is essentially a backing material and a base for the image but none of the words are going to be readable in the end because it's going to have some paint treatment added so I'm making strips of about maybe two centimetres just under an inch or so the um, end bits with just the white paper and I'm keeping for other projects they do come in handy but for this I want all words so that 
it kind of looks even. It's like filling in the background, really. So I just tear it down into rough squares. Again, it doesn't need to be exact. You can be really quite picky about it and get it all exact angles and exact whatever, but I don't think it's worth it. So I've got here a stack of pieces. This should be enough. This is about seven or eight pages worth. So I should be able to get at least one coat out of this and then depending on how well this covers I might do another. So anyway I've started with a kind of a base coat of colour here. Now I'm not going for um, exactly life accurate because I, I still can't find the original image. Um, I'm falling back on, on this one which I drew got to be going on 10 years ago from the original and that's the one I've been basing everything else on so yeah I'm using that as my guide but what I want to do essentially is keep the pencil or the pen line look so in the painting I'm just creating the background colour and just bringing it away from the the surface. Now this surface um, you should see that I, I used a sponge and really kind of watered the paint and started with brown, added a bit of green and, and then an all over bronze just to give it a little bit of shine. So I'm going to continue on with the painting. I don't want to use a lot of colour because I'm trying to kind of recreate most of the shading with pen instead so and because these are the shades I used on the background it's it's gonna look a little bit not exactly camouflaged but it's not going to be as as vibrantly different which is what the pen then is going to add now I used to do a lot of pen and ink drawings direct from from photos and I'm still hoping to get back into that at some point. But that's on the cards eventually. So I'm essentially just kind of blobbing on in very, very thin layers. I'm, here, I'm not adding any water at all and this, um, this white acrylic is quite thin to start with. So doing it in layers so that I'll end up with different shades of white anyway which will hopefully add to the effect of feathers at least that's the plan so it means it's a bit more of a of a job a bit more of a process to actually paint this but I, I like the process that's kind of where I find enjoyment in art is the process of doing, not necessarily what you make out of it, but the process of blending colours, putting things together to see where it goes essentially. So I'm using the tip of my brush to kind of create, I wouldn't say texture, but just feather-like shapes. Okay, I think the battery died when I was part way through the painting of this, so I've got to a point where I've got a really good kind of base coverage. It looks kind of more kind of snowy owl with dark bits than a, than a um, tiny owl, little owl. So I'm going to carry on. I've also done a little bit of gold in the eyes and on the talons just for, just for effect. I think that's going to be enough for now, but we'll see. Once, once the... Um, the whole image is complete. Might need to kind of up the gold a little bit. So I'm just going to start in with another pen, or the same pen. Um, most artists avoid using ballpoint pens at all costs, but I actually prefer them. They they they, they write more smoothly. Um, in the past, I have used um, India ink or um, printer refill inks, but on this surface, it just kind of it spreads and blooms. It doesn't doesn't want to settle because of the amount of the glue that I've top coated the paper with. It kind of creates a resist and it goes nowhere. So doing it with 
this kind of pen or with uh, a permanent marker with a very fine nib works just as well so going down market but I think this creates a better effect and it, and it has more control So my hours had um, two coats of spray varnish or spray lacquer. Um, I will reiterate, do not use a water-based brush-on varnish, particularly if you're using a standard um, ballpoint pen for your outline, because it will just wash it out and it will look awful. So that's pretty much finished now. I've got to sort out a frame and put the clock movement in. Now I could have built the paper around the edges a bit more, help me build a frame but didn't think of that when I was making it so I'm gonna instead build a frame using some of this uh, PVC I've got so first of all I'm gonna mark the center point here this is a 20 centimeter frame so that's gonna be 10 about there and then we do stick on some double-sided tape. Now I want this to be as close to the front as I dare, probably about three mil back, four mil back maybe from the painted edge.
So, that's my hour clock completed. And when the other clock movements arrive, I'm going to have a lovebirds one and a poison arrow frog to go on the stall. So, um, this video I believe is going to be out in October. So these are going to be on sale probably June and July. So they may already be gone. If not, come by and have a look. Or is there, if there's a particular animal <laughs> that you like, wouldn't mind making some more. So yeah, it was uh, probably more complicated than it needed to be, but the actual um, the process of the painting and, and things was really nice and easy. So. This is a great project and even if you don't have any particular drawing skill if you can trace and copy a design then the colouring is, is all you need to do so yeah I'll see you next week